Our scripture reading for this Easter Sunday is Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. So listen for the word of the Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, Who's going to roll the stone away for the, from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go, tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see Jesus there, just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, the women fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord on this Easter Sunday. Thanks be to God. Today is a landmark day, not only because it's Easter Sunday, that is actually quite remarkable in and of itself, but it is also the first Easter Sunday in the history of our church, even going back all the way to the founding of the legacy churches. It is the first Easter that we will be celebrating the resurrection in at least three different ways. Some of us will worship in person, some of us will all will worship via the internet. That's you folks. Some of us will worship via print. And some of us might even do a combination of those. So let's take a second to rejoice in the ways our church has expanded worship opportunities during the bleak days of COVID. Because that is no small feat. And as we celebrate Easter today, no matter how the message is received, the message is the same. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And in fact, before COVID was real, you could walk into any Christian church in the country on Easter Sunday and hear that same message. And now... You can go to Facebook Live or YouTube Live or Zoom or maybe some other cool streaming platform that I haven't even heard of and hear that message, the same message. And so the way that you access the message is not nearly as important as the message itself. And this message is extraordinary and life-changing. Christ's resurrection means love and salvation and forgiveness and the already and the not yet. Now the disciples did their best to spread that message from a more uh, now go and pass it on approach. Theologians and Bible commentators do their best to spread the message from a more academic and critical approach. And church preachers and teachers do their best to spread that message from a more pastoral approach. But no matter how it's communicated, the message is the same. Christ equals love and grace today and in the future. So that message began during Jesus' few years of ministry. 
while he was traveling around and teaching and preaching, it was the first time that people had heard that message in a way in which Jesus was delivering it. It was new and revolutionary and subversive. And the people who had ears to hear played it on repeat day and night. After Jesus' death and resurrection, when the women went to visit the tomb, a brand new cycle of this message began. This time from pretty unlikely witnesses. So we've got three women, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Salome, who went to visit the tomb with spices to anoint Jesus' body. When they got there, they found that this very large stone that they knew was in front of the tomb was missing. And really, they were beyond delighted about that because they were stressing on their way to the tomb about having to think about moving it themselves. And so with the stone rolled away, they went inside. And when they went inside, they didn't find a body. They found a young man in a white robe seated to the right side. Now, scholars have debated whether this was a human believer that Jesus had healed earlier or whether it was an angel. And so I'll let you decide what you think. So this robed being person told the women that Jesus had been raised and wasn't in the tomb and to go and tell the disciples, particularly Peter, that Jesus would meet them in Galilee. And then most critical editions of the Greek New Testament version of the book of Mark, the, the book of Mark ends with, overcome with terror and dread, the women fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now that's, that's two sentences, and commentators have had a field day with those two sentences. And if you sit down and read all of this, it, it, it'll make your eyes cross, trust me. So one interpretation, this interpretation stream says that this was a total and other, utter failing of the women. Their fear prevented them from spreading the good news that they had learned. And this actually displayed their own cowardice and lack of discipleship. So that's one interpretation. Another interpretation says that women held little status in society. And if they had gone from the tomb and run around shouting all about what they had learned no one would have paid them any attention anyway. And for what it's worth, womanist commentators, who also happen to be female, have given both of those interpretations. So I will let you decide if you think the women were a bunch of cowards who couldn't step out of their dictated roles in society to spread the gospel, or if they were evangelizing but within the constraints of the society in which they lived. Honestly, I think either interpretation could be justified. But what I find more interesting is the fact that we have a role to play in this scene as well. And so here's where we come in. A few minutes ago, I stated that the message is the same no matter who gives it or how it is received, right? And so, yes, according to the critical editions of the book of Mark, the story ends here. The message lies with the women and we're simply not privy to what they do with it beyond that. 
So we are going to think of this as the women passing the torch to us. Maybe they really were cowards who were too scared to say anything. Maybe they really were held back by societal constraints and never said a word to anyone. Either way, those gendered restrictions don't exist in today's society. You're watching this sermon written and preached by a woman. And we're unafraid people who live boldly into our faith. So this Sunday, Mary, Mary, and Salome put the torch of discipleship in our hands. And it's up to us to carry it forward. So think of coming to a time of worship as a way to refuel the torch. Think of fellowship as a time of camaraderie. And when you leave your time of worship and go out into the world, you're taking the torch with you. So now that the torch is in your hand, what are you going to do with it? Sure, you could go about life as if nothing were different and compartmentalize church into one hour on Sundays. Millions of Christians across time have done that, so you'd be in very good company. Or you could get your working hands and feet ready to take that torch into the world and shine it in all the dark places. And we've got plenty of those. So if it upsets you, to read about the folks recovering from natural disasters and how they're struggling to put their lives back together and to get on their feet again, I can put you in touch with Presbyterian Disaster Assistance and you can help. If it makes you angry to read about racial injustices and oppression and poverty in our world, I can put you in touch with Presbyterian Mission Agency and you can work on that. And if you want to help feed local families, both the Sayer Athens Chow for Children and Waverly Chow for Children, both of them operate out of the downstairs of our church. And I can put you in touch with the people who run those organizations and you can help there. So no matter what issue ignites your passion to carry the torch and to serve, I can probably connect you with a group or an organization who's already working in that area. And even if you don't feel called to serve right now because you're not vaccinated or you're homebound or the timing is bad or you're just not comfortable with it, That's okay. You can still carry the torch into the world by telling a friend or a neighbor that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And that means that God loves them, that God offers forgiveness to everyone, and that God is in work at through your church here in Waverly. So feel free to share our home worship guides on your Facebook page, if you have one, or email it to a friend. And for our folks who are reading this in a printed copy, I'm encouraging them to, when they're finished with it, pass it on to somebody else. Or when you're ready to come back to in-person, in-person church, invite a friend to come with you. Do what you can to share the good news that Christ is risen. And we Christians are doing what we can to bring God's love into the world. So no matter how the message is communicated, 
the women have passed the torch to you and me. It's now in our hands to carry it out into the world and to share the good news again and again. Amen.